Hey everybody, it's Joe G from the new 8-Bit Heroes. Thanks for checking out this video about NES Maker, the tool set that we built to create actual hardware playable cartridge-based NES games without ever having to write a line of code. There's a lot to this tool, so I want to go step by step and show what I would do if I were using this tool to make a new adventure game uh, starting from scratch, starting with nothing. First thing is open up the software, and this is sort of your default window here. Um, this is sort of your project. Oops, sorry. Sort of, sort of I'm trying to size this window up perfectly with the uh, with the video capture here. This is sort of all of your assets. Uh, you've got your overworld and underworld maps where your tiles are actually laid out, your map editors. You've got your graphic editors for um, your assets, paths, special tiles, things, animate, screen animations. You've got monster graphics banks where that holds your NPCs and your monsters and your bosses and things like that. You've got your palettes, which handle all, all the colors in your game, your monster palettes, which handle the monster palettes in your game, um, your text and text groups, which handle what NPCs say where and things like that. And then you can dig into each of these to define a, a lot of this information a lot uh, more specifically. Um, if I were to make a new screen right now, um, I'm going to go to my overworld and this is my starting screen. Uh, let's just change the starting screen actually um, to here. And I'm going to put him sort of in the middle of the screen sort of um, so if I go ahead and this is where I'm going to start on this screen, on this screen of the overworld. And you can see it's completely gray. Um, these are the palettes it's currently using. You can see there's no palette selected because I haven't created any palettes yet. Um, and there's no graphics because the graphics won't even be seen if I don't have any color sets set up. Uh, in order to really understand how palettes work in the NES, um, you can see we've got four groupings of four colors here for the palette that's currently loaded. Let's take a look at um, Mystic Origins, what I just had up here. And this is playing inside of FCEUX uh, emulator. I can actually look at what the graphics processor is doing, the PPU, and I can see these four sets of background colors and these four sets of sprite colors. So when you're looking at this screen, you can see the background is really comprised of these colors here. And I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press start on this, and then I'm gonna pause this, so that way we can analyze it a little bit. Um, and here's the same thing. You can see the background is comprised of this, these sets of colors here, and the sprites, like the moving components, the player, the NPCs, or the monsters, or, or other things, are comprised of these sets of colors. The player is using these, and this is his weapon, and his projectile, and this is this NPC, and this is that NPC. And you can kind of see how it, how it groups into color in, into groups of four colors. Uh, the same thing goes for our tool over here. Um, it already pre you know, puts those color sets in groups of four for you so you don't have to think about it. If you really had to, if you were really looking at what this tool is generating with colors, it's really generating lines of hex values that look like this. Again, you can kind of see how I've split it up into groups of four. Um, and if you were doing this by hand, you could go through line by line and create your palettes this way. And each of these hex values represents a different uh, color that the NES can reproduce. But rather than doing this and creating these entirely long, you know, epic uh, series of tables, you can use tools in order to export that data. Um, one such tool, which is an amazing tool uh, for creating graphics, I'll just show this to you real quick, is Shiru's Nest Screen Tool. He's made a lot of amazing, amazing uh, uh, tools and resources for the community. Um, and you can see his palettes are, uh, so these are all the colors that the NES can reproduce. Here they are right here. And I could actually export, I could save that, copy it out basically. And so I don't have to think about these numbers. Like I don't have to think about that this is color number, if you look down here, color number three or four or 24 or 27. I could just worry about the colors and then when I export this palette to ASM, it'll give me the values like this that I could then paste in uh, to wherever I need to. And that's awesome. We wanted to take that even much further than that. Um, and we want to make it really easy where groups of colors are not only all of your palettes are exported at one time. So 
all of your possible palettes for your game are exported at one time and put in the right places and assigned to the right screens and things like that. So the first thing to do is to set up a palette. And since we've never looked at palettes before, um, let's make a new palette group and call it, uh, let's call it area one. And I'm going to just pick this first palette here and I'm going to rename it area one one so this is the first palette that goes with area one maybe this is a forest or a grassland or something i'm going to assign area i'm going to assign this to area one so now it's inside this palette group great and i'm going to give it some colors now this first color in all of these is always going to be the same no matter what i set this to you see all the rest of those sub palettes change accordingly and if we look back we can kind of see this happening over here um, the NES always, uh, us, uh, this color is always the same. If I were to change this to any other color, and we can even see that in Shiro's Nest, Nest screen tool, if I open that up again, it kind of forces me to do that too. If I change this first color, I can see it changes in all four of these sub palettes. Again, it changes in all. Now, these other colors aren't the same way, right? It, um, and that's just because that's the way the Nest operates. It, this first color is always the quote unquote transparent color. It's always the same. We use for our game black, but depending on your needs, maybe you're making a platformer and you've got sky. Maybe you make the transparent color blue, whatever works for your game. I'm going to keep mine to black. So let's come over here. Um, you also notice that we've got this palette, which is already defined for our game. That's our HUD. Uh, if you look at our game here, you can see uh, these colors here. And if we look at the actual game itself, those are the colors that we use for this area. Now, you don't have to use them for a HUD. You can be clever and use these colors uh, for assets if you want to. For us, that made the most sense. Um, so, okay. I could go ahead and start putting in colors by just clicking on one of these and selecting the color that I want. I'm going to make a grassland. Now, the reason that you see, again, if we were looking at um, Shiro's tool, if we were looking at our game, you would only see four sets of colors where we have eight. That's because what you're looking at is the availability for a day and a night color palette that are connected to each other. They are related to each other. So when I put them on a screen, I, we have a day night cycle. You, you can make day colors, these and night colors, these. So maybe I'll use the darker green for the ground color at night. All right. Um, now, you don't have to use these for day and night. You could use them for a dark world, light world mechanic. You could use them for a lot of different reasons. We use them for day and night. I'm going to make a wood and stone. And I'll keep that dark gray and water. And that'll be for my first main area. And this would be the night palette. We're going to adjust that in a second. So now I've got, I could look over here and I could see uh, my area one, one uh, palettes, uh, are these colors and I can go into my overworld um, and it automatically assigned one one. Now that's not what I want it to look like yet. Obviously I want to put some graphics in there. Um, it automatically put this first color because uh, whatever this blank tiled is defaulting to this color. So let's go to our graphics banks and we're going to make an asset and you can see what's happening is this asset right here is this block. Um, there's nothing in my tile set. So that's not good. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to make some grass. And in order to make some grass, I'm going to uh, edit this tile. And when I'm editing a tile, I can pick what palette group uh, I'm actually seeing. I want to make this tile completely green. So we have a, a very simple uh, drawing tool. We may make this uh, more advanced, but really for asset creation, we've noticed that all you really need is a pencil tool for making pixel art. Um, if you're doing stuff that's complex in animations, you might want to have copy and paste functionality and bucket functionality and stuff like that. But really pixel art is created dot by dot. So if I want to create some grass, uh, I don't know, I could try and make some, I could try and put some, um, it's probably not going to look all that good when, uh, when looped, but um, I could even add like a couple things of brown in here just to give it some character. And I'm going to save the modified tiles. And what you can see is there's my grass. And now this is my grass tile right here. And I can make a new asset that just uses a normal style. It, it's all it is is a fully walkable uh, grass tile. And I can call this grass 
and I can save it. And what I see is in my assets, I now have grass. Um, let's say I want to make a brown rock. Okay. Uh, I can edit this asset, which is what I'm using right now. I can edit it. Um, now, in order to make a brown rock, probably what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to have to make the whole background that it's on grass, right? I'm going to make this whole thing grass. And to make a rock, um, I'm not going to spend any time doing this. I'm going to make a really crappy looking rock here. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, and I'll make some like curves that kind of come in. Again, this is not me spending any time doing graphics at all. Um, and then I'm going to want to make this gray. So I'm using the second, um, second sub palette here. And I'm just kind of coloring in. And those of you who are artists, don't please don't mock my crappy art skills here. All right, so now I have sort of a rock. Just add some. Great, so I'm going to save that modified tile. And I can see I've got now a brown rock. And let's say I want to make this solid so I can't pass it. I could call this brown rock and I can save it and let's just say I want a second version of this that's also gray just to make my screen look a little bit more interesting I can click on this second grouping here and I can call this gray rock and it's also solid and I hit save new so now you can see I've got three assets in graphics bank one um, if I go to even though I've only got two graphics I've got three assets out of it um, if I go to my overworld this is automatically going to update with my grass because it was set to the default file uh, the default tile which was this first tile um, and i could now put in some rocks just to make it visually interesting Like that. So I could create like a little maze already. Now, let's say I want to see what this is going to look like at night. Well, at night, um, the only thing that I've set is my, uh, my dark green here. So if I look at, if I want to know the op, like the, um, I want this to represent a darker brown and this to represent a darker blue, etc. So what I can do is, I can either do it here, I can update it here, or I can go back to my palettes and I can kind of eye it up. Okay, I want a darker color set of blues. So I'm going to just shift these down one. So now these two blues become those two at night. Um, grays are a little harder because if I take my light gray and I make it one darker, you can see, if I take my light gray and make it one darker, you can see, okay, great. But this is the dark gray. How do I make that darker? Uh, generally what I do is I'll use this color blue and it kind of gives it this night look. And that's, so this is why we have a day and a night and we don't just allow it go to the next darker color because what if we're using the darker color like brown? What if we're using the brown already? So I'm going to make my brown go to this night shade as well and my light brown go to dark brown. So this is what my night palette will look like for those assets. Um, and if I go back to my assets, I can actually look day, night, and I can see these are what the pal these are what the uh, graphics would look like at night versus during the day. Um, so that's a little bit about palettes and how to create very simple assets. Uh, the next time we're going to look at more complexities involving tiles and tile types and collision types, and we'll actually see uh, the game. Uh, being tested once we've built a couple of screens. If you want to see more videos about Nest Maker and how to create your own NES games, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us get the word out further by sharing this video on social media.